What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to cast a 3D object out of the metal of your choosing using the Delft Clay system. So, let's do it! Thank you so much for watching my video, I do sincerely appreciate it. This is going to be a simple video here, just showing you a little casting. This is how I do it. As I mentioned, we'll be using Delft Clay. There's only a few things you actually need to do this. This here is called a flask. It's made out of iron. Really simple mold. It just has two sides to it, the male and the female side there. They just fit together nicely. If we can get it, there we go. They fit together like that. And then you'll pour your metal into the top. Now the first step is going to be to put clay in the bottom and then we'll press the piece into it after that. I'm going to show you the entire process so you know exactly how to do it for yourself. Now the clay that I'm using is called Delft clay, but you can also get Petcher Bond. You squish it together and then it will hold its shape really well. So I'm just going to pack it into the bottom of this mold here. Now while I'm packing the clay in here, I just want to mention you can use tons of different metals for 3D casting. You can use copper, silver, gold, uh, sterling silver, brass, whatever you want to use. Uh, I'm going to be using silver in this video because I love making stuff out of pure silver and I'm working on a pure silver chess set. So now that we have the clay all packed into the bottom, we'll go ahead and scrape it off so it's nice and flat. Usually I like to flip it over and scrape off the backside as well, just so we have an even working piece here. And the next step will be to actually press the piece into the clay. Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you press it only about halfway. It's very important that you don't go over halfway or under halfway because you want the other half of the mold to have basically the mirror image of this side. If your 3D piece has two different sides, that's okay. Just try and find the middle like this. You can also see that the clay is very flat, which is exactly what we want. We don't want it coming up in one spot or dipping down. So the next step will be to put powder on the top so that the two halves of the mold break apart easily. This is called talcum powder, but you could use baby powder or something like that. doesn't really matter. And then I have this bulb device that we're going to go ahead and blow off some of the powder so that there's not too much excess. I find it's best when there's just a little bit separating the two pieces. After that's done, we'll put the other half of the flask together, and then we're gonna go ahead and pack this side with clay. You wanna pack it nice and tight. Usually what I do is press it down with my hand until it's you know, about as hard as I can, and then I'll hit it with the hammer and get it a little tighter, and that's gonna be the best way to do it. You don't wanna pack it too tight, otherwise it might start to crack, but get it nice and tight so that the piece will end up looking good in the long run. So after that's done, we can go ahead and move all this to the side, and then we'll break it apart and see how it looks. This is looking really good. You just wanna make sure both halves are complete. The next step is to make a channel for the metal to flow into. I'm using the back half of a drill bit. Take your time with this. There's no sense in rushing it and ruining the mold you just made. Then when pulling out the piece, just pull it straight up, and if there's any spots that start to collapse in, try and fix them with your fingers so you don't have to redo the whole thing. Make the channel on the other side, and you kind of want the channel to be a little bit wider at the top. What I'm doing now is drawing some lines with a toothpick for air to flow into, and these lines you just want to put on any corner of the piece. Another thing you can do is actually poke a hole all the way through to the other side to let a little bit more air escape. This is really important on detailed pieces, but if the piece you're doing is very simple, then it's probably not needed. Next, we're going to be putting the two halves together. You just want to make sure there's no excess clay that will actually ruin the mold. So once you slap them together like so, you can go ahead and put some rubber bands around them so they don't come apart at all. I find using rubber bands works the best because you don't have to worry about clamps or anything and now we're all ready to pour. As far as melting goes, you can use a setup like this. This is my oxygen acetylene torch and then I have a whip as well. You'll just melt the silver in there and then pour it out into the mold. But an easier strategy is using this right here. This is my furnace. We're going all the way up to 1095 degrees Celsius, which is about 2000 Fahrenheit. You can see the silver is already starting to melt down nicely. And then once it reaches full temperature, we're gonna go ahead and pour it in. Now for the pouring process, I kind of block it here with my hands, but you just want to make sure you pour it really fast. It's okay if you pour a little bit too much because we're going to cut off the top anyway, so that doesn't really matter. As you can see here, I filled it uh, not all the way to capacity,
capacity, but a little bit overflow. After about 10 minutes, it will have cooled down enough to actually open it up. And then we can see this is actually looking really good here. I usually just clean it off in the sink with some water. And then there is this one spot on the side that the mold wasn't all the way pressed together, but that's okay. We can totally fix that in the finishing process. It'll just take a little bit more sanding. The next step in the process is going to be to cut the sprue off. There's a couple different ways to do this. I like to use bolt cutters. These 36 inch ones do the job no problem. So once you get the sprue cut off there, then we can get to the longest and most difficult part of casting, which will be finishing. There are so many different tools you can use. I just have a few laid out here. The pliers can be used to hold the piece if it gets too hot when you're sanding it. I will show you another strategy later to make sure you don't burn yourself. These snips are very nice for cutting off any small pieces. And then a Dremel is a must. Get a bunch of different bits. These fine bits are awesome for the little corners and whatnot. And then you're going to need some sanding drums as well. There's a bigger one and a smaller one for the sort of tighter areas. Sandpaper is very key for getting a polished look at the end. Now we're just going to start removing different parts with our snips. If you have some bigger snips, those can be useful in removing the larger pieces. The smaller pieces, you just sort of want to clip those away. And take your time that you don't clip too deep into the piece because if you remove something, it's almost impossible to put it back on. Now I'm going to use the really fine Dremel bit to get all of the little corners that I can't reach with anything else. For the sanding drums, I start with the smallest one and then just work my way up from there. Once you get to the larger ones, you will notice that the piece will start to get very hot, especially if you're using a metal like silver that's a great conductor of heat. So I use this vise to hold the piece in place. I use some cloth in between there. A lot of jewelers will actually use a wooden one so they don't damage whatever they're working with, but this is just a cheap workaround. Once you have the piece looking the way you want, it's now time to start with the final sanding. I use 600 grit, then I work my way up to 800, and finally 1200. You can use whatever grits you want, and you can go up as fine as 3000, 4000, whatever, but I find that 1200 is enough. So after the 600, it starts to look pretty nice, but we can do even better than that. So I hit it with the 800, and then after the 800, we do the 1200. Now you might think we're almost done, but the final thing I use is steel wool. Make sure to get quadruple zero steel wool, as I think that's the finest you can get. This does a really good job getting out any of the small scratches, so we can get a nice polished finish on the piece. After a few minutes with that, we're now ready to rock and roll with the tumbler. I am loving the final product here. So what I use for tumbling is some stainless steel shot. And you can use other mediums, but that's just my favorite. We'll go ahead and pop the chest piece in there. Shine Bright Solution is my favorite compound to actually get that nice finish. This here is the Shine Bright with some water added to it. You don't want to fill it up too much, just a little bit over the top. And then we're going to go ahead and put the lid on and we can begin the tumbling process. When I first started making stuff, I would tumble anywhere from 1 to 2 to even 12 hours. But after a while, I realized you really only need about half an hour of tumbling and then it's good to go. So once we take the top off here, you'll see it's actually super soapy. But here is the final chest piece in all of its glory. Oh yeah, we can see it's starting to shine through there. That is looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to go clean this off with some water, and then we will do the wrap-up. All right, so that was how to cast 3D objects using the Delft Clay casting system. We started with just a plastic chest piece, and we ended up with this beautiful silver one. There's a few things I want to mention as we wrap up the video. I did sand this down quite a bit, but as you can see, there's still some small scratches in there. So you can really take a long time in the sanding process if you want to get a really smooth, shiny finish. It's kind of up to you how long you want to take to do it. But uh, I find that just this is good enough for me, especially because these pieces are going to actually be used in the game. So I'm not too worried about it. The piece actually came out really well. There is a small hole at the bottom, which that happens sometimes, but I'm probably going to cover this with felt anyway. And then there's this one small nick in the side. So that probably happened when I was making the mold. I guess probably the most important thing to know is that the longer you take with the mold making process, the less time you're going to have to take when you're actually finishing. 
So if you make any mistakes when you're making the mold, as long as they're not too big, usually it's not a problem. You can just take a little bit of extra time in the sanding process. But if there's any part of the piece that you drastically mess up, you'll probably have to recast it entirely. So take your time with it and also figure out what pieces you'll be able to do. There are certain three-dimensional objects that are just too intricate for Delft clay casting. Simple shapes are fairly easy to do, but if you have a very detailed piece, you might have to use another system like lost wax casting. So look into that as well. If you want to buy any of the stuff that I use in this video, I'll put some links down below in the description for you to check out. Feel free to leave any comments down below if you have any questions, or if there's anything that you do differently than me in your casting process, Process, I'd love to know so I can improve mine even more. Lastly, I want to say a massive thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you all in the next one. Silver Dragons, out.